Well, welcome back to the Grapple Theory Podcast. We're joined today by a very special guest leading up to a huge match at Wrestle Queendom. It's Sapphire Reed. Sapphire, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Hello, thank you very much. I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. I'm all right. It's great to finally have you on. It's great to to be chatting. Um, Obviously, we're chatting just a few weeks after you won uh, the Eve She Won, which is incredible. Like, it was an amazing, amazing night. Like, I mean... It was just unbelievable. And we always start by asking our guests like sort of about how their year's been. I think it's fair to say you've you've had a pretty good year. Would that be understating yeah. it? <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's been pretty good so far. I've just been riding the wave. So it's yeah, it's been great at the moment. So yeah, I'm really enjoying everything. <laughs> and let's start with let's start with She One. because uh, obviously that was only that was only a few weeks ago. Um talk to me about that that whole that whole day because I mean obviously the amount of matches you wrestled for one like wrestling four yeah. matches in a day is just crazy for anyone um, yeah, for sure. but, but when it's something like that I mean like talk to me about how it started first when when did Dan let you know that you were winning it well I kind of had a feeling just from the chats we had sort of been having and mm. the whole lead up to it um but like kind of like the day we got I got there was like the official day it was like right yeah you're winning and I'm like okay <laughs> so four <laughs> matches let's go you know <laughs> how does that make you feel in that moment what when when when, was... when he told you when he was like yeah it's official like you're winning it <laughs> I, just, I, 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 I don't know I feel like I was a bit speechless you know like excited and happy and grateful obviously but just like okay so it's actually happening like this is we're gonna go through with it and it's gonna well, it ended up being amazing. But yeah, I was absolutely full of nerves and excitement. But no, the day was just such a great experience overall. overall. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, it was great to see you win it. It was like, and the, the atmosphere is great when you when you finally won it, when that three hit and you won it, like the pop was incredible. Like you had your family there as well, right? Yes, yeah. I had uh, quite a few of my family over um, there. Like I had my dad, my mom, my sister came. And then my aunt and my cousin came as well. So yeah, it was like a little uh, family get together as well for them. I was going to say, is that is that more nerve wracking having the whole family there watching you? Yeah, because um, right, my aunt and my cousin hadn't seen me live before. They've wanted to come for ages, and my sis no, my sister has seen me, but not like to that extent. Like she's seen me at some family shows, but um, no, yeah, they were so chuffed like they loved it loved every moment what about so the family that hadn't seen you wrestle before like after the after like after the show were they like so what the fuck like this is the shit you do like every week like how yeah. do you do that <laughs> yeah no they were like they were pretty uh shocked but like loved it like they knew they, they have always like followed my instagram and all my social media and that so they'd mm. seen clips and that but seeing it live is obviously completely different and they were just kind of blown away i suppose <laughs> would be yeah it's a uh, it's like it's very especially if you've never seen it before like to see one of your family members doing it you're like oh whoa like <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that's awesome that's really cool and like w- uh, did it do- like was there any point like whether whether like fatigue hits you because wrestling four matches in in a day is not easy like or is it just sort of like the adrenaline keeping you going i think we didn't really i didn't really have time to be tired you you know, like, obviously, I can't, I felt it as it was going on. But then it was like, when I knew I was going straight back out, I was like, right, let's, let's go, let's go. And then as soon as I walk back out, I'm like, full of energy. But I mean, you could probably tell I was tired at points. But I mean, if you're not tired a little bit, there's got to be something wrong with you. But <laughs> no, yeah, it was just... Oh my god, it was a day. <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, we won't go through through every single match, but we'll talk, I want to talk about obviously the uh, the first match, the six second miracle. Um, I mean, like, how how does that come about? Like, who's who's thinking was that? And like, in terms of putting that match together, because obviously it's just like sort of one move done, but it was like yeah. it was like a huge statement for you, obviously, because that was like your that was your first win in Eve as well. So like, yeah. whose idea was it to have it be like, oh, let's just get it like be a quick one really surprise everyone so i think i think where obviously we knew i was going to be doing like three other matches after that and we didn't really have a lot of time i think dan wanted it to kind of be like right get straight to the point Mm. like let's make a story out of this and this is going to be your first win it's going to be quick 
but it's going to be like a shock to everyone like a shock to me a shock to you know like <laughs> even though I knew it was coming I was still like oh my god okay I've won now so, <laughs> and you know it kind of hit me a little bit there where I was like right okay let's go let's get on with the rest of the night you know yeah no that's cool as well I'm like it, it sort of works storyline wise because I was talking to a couple of people um, like people that you know as well from other shows, like Ewan, uh, you know Ewan from um, yes, like yeah. he comes to everything. Like he's like yeah. Mister Wrestling down here in London. But um, mm-hmm. so like talking to him as well, and he was like, "Oh, it's actually quite smart because it's the sort of thing where like it's sort of like oh, like you've had obviously Nina Samuels like tormenting you all this time through Eve and mm-hmm. stopping you getting that first win, and it's sort of like oh, now she doesn't have time to get involved because it's just like that yeah. quick. So it kind exactly. of worked from that storyline perspective as well. Sure, for sure. Which is really cool. No, it worked on a lot of levels. And like obviously, like you say, it keeps you a little fresher for doing three more matches. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> but you had, oh, you had a tough run. That was a tough run to the final as well. Like, oh, Dan didn't make it easy for you, did he? <laughs> Mm-mm. Uh, say it again, sorry? Oh, sorry. Like, Dan didn't make it easy for you. Like, he, he well, made it... no, I suppose he didn't, but we'll forgive him. <laughs> <laughs> no we'll let him off we'll let him off but again like obviously a great run um that that the semi-final match you had was i thought like just generally match of the weekend like over both shows i thought that was incredible i thought that was a great match Thank like you so do you do you get time to feel like whether it's a good match while you're in it could you like do you feel that when you're in the moment i mean yeah like just from the way the crowd are kind of reacting i think where like everyone was kind of so behind me then anyway like I feel like no matter how kind of good the match sort of would have been I think where I already I feel like I kind of had them and they were rooting for me it was mm. like no matter what happens like if it's a, an amazing match or a good match like they want to see me get to the final and I mean I did and it also happened to be a great match as well so I guess it's a plus but no yeah like I just when you feel the crowd and you hear the crowd, mm. you're like, right, let's let's keep going. Like, do you know what I mean? So yeah, and you've you've had that back in like throughout, like since your Eve debut, right? Because obviously you're like you're local to to yeah. the promotion, yeah. and like I feel like you you get that a lot, right? Obviously Southeast number one, right? That's the chance. Yeah, and like <laughs> that, that 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 must be nice to know that like people are taking to you that quickly there. Oh, definitely. It's a. Uh... It was I don't know if it was like surprising to me at first or I don't know like when it all kind of happened you don't really know how to react but then it's like okay, it's good that people actually like me like this is I must be doing doing something right if people are behind me and rooting for me so no it's it's a great feeling to know and obviously where where I'm local where I'm based like around London South East London. Mm. And you've got all the boys chanting that, like it's it's pretty cool, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, love it, and you, and you are smashing it. You're doing great at the minute. You really are. You really are. And like, uh, we'll talk about we'll talk we'll talk about the final because obviously facing facing Alex Windsor, like, I mean that's got to be like obviously it's a cool moment to get a win over Alex Windsor in Eve, but also like I imagine it's got to be quite reassuring to have like sort of that bigger moment and and someone so experienced there in the ring with you oh, yeah. to like sort of help you through it. For sure, yeah, like. I think by the end of the day, we were both like, <sighs> like you know, but like out of everyone, I'm so glad it was her, like that I had in a final because she really helped me through it. Like she's just so good at like what she does and she really did just help me pull through, help me get through, do you know what I mean? So mm. I'm very grateful, like, yeah, we no. had covering that match <laughs> no for sure for sure awesome moment and what about like because you talked about your feelings beforehand but like what about what about when that three hits because obviously we spoke after afterwards at, at merch and everything but like when does it sink in for you like oh shit i've just won the she won like when does that actual moment sink in was it like that night or the day after or no no like i don't know because people have asked me this and i'm like i feel i feel like it never has sunk in properly like I just think it's such a especially for me like winning it as well was just a whole like I couldn't really wrap my head around it sort of thing so like after I won I was like right I I, let me take my time here let me soak this all in let me try and soak this all up and I just I loved every moment but I was still like oh my god I've won like I have won you know what I mean like it was it was crazy. I just feel like I still haven't properly taken it in. I have a bit more now, mm. but at the time, even like a week after, I was still like, oh my 
my god, I, I won. Like, what the hell? Like, that actually happened, shit. Like, I know, it did actually happen. Do you think it'll feel fully real on November 19th when you're standing across the ring from me or your master? I think then, I'll, I'll, I'll realise then for sure. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, right, okay, I did win that. Now I'm going to be doing this. Yeah. Big step, big step up. Massive step. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you must be really. I mean, we'll talk, we'll talk about it as well because obviously, Queendom, by the time this goes out, not far away, a couple of weeks away. I mean, huge event. It's the biggest event on the Eve calendar. Um, yeah. And obviously, you're in main event for it against, in in my opinion, like probably the one of the best wrestlers in the world, like top three, in my opinion, easy. 100%. So, yeah. like, how does, how does that feel knowing, knowing you're going to get to face her and, and like sort of what that means for your career, like win or lose? Yeah, I mean, Me You is just incredible. Like, I've wanted to wrestle her for such a long time and to actually be able to do it now on, on like, a big stage for me and at the biggest show of the year for Eve, it's such a great opportunity and just a great feeling. I'm just so grateful that it is Me You and it's... it's it's for the title as well, which is also a nut. Do you know what I mean? It's like Queendom, me, you, the Eve title. It's just how much bigger can it get? And I'm trying not to uh, put too much pressure on myself, but obviously there's always that pressure there. No, for sure. For sure. I was going to say like, because again, I don't want to put any extra pressure on you. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've got enough, but like no, okay. you're, you're, you're crushing it at the minute. So I don't think you should feel any pressure, but like, in terms of, and I want to get back to talking about like sort of like starting out with Eve, so we'll get to that later. But like starting out with Eve and knowing like how tough Dan is to please as a critic, like mm. is that more pressure or is the pressure like sort of now you've won the She One to prove like him right that he was right to let you with like get you in the She One? I suppose, I suppose it's a mixture of all of that, you know, like you want to impress the promoter, you want to not not just impress Dan, but also everyone else, the fans that have been mm. rooting for you, even like my family, myself, because I've put too much pressure on myself out of all of it. And it's like, it's, it's good and it's bad because it shows that, you know, I care and I want to make sure I deliver and I will, hopefully. <laughs> but um, yeah, I suppose it's just a mixture of everything to want to perform at the best that I can and that's the stage to do it on so I'm like let's do it and just smash it (laughs) no and you are you really are genuinely like your performances have been so good like in and out of Eve like just everywhere you go everywhere I've seen you perform you just absolutely kill it which is brilliant thank you so much Um, but like well taking it back to the to the start of Eve like again Dan is notoriously difficult to like to please in terms of like we have everyone on the show set it's like once you're booked on Eve you know you're doing something right because he's that hard to please to even get on Eve so like how how does that feel like coming through like having done your training and everything and you know you're making these steps on the on the ladder and then Dan gets in touch with you and is like I want to book you on Eve how does how does that feel initially like do you remember what that conversation was like well, yeah, because originally, like, my first actual show with, um, at Eve was, it was meant to be an eight-woman tag, mm. and it, I can't remember what happened, but people either couldn't make it, or, do you know what I mean, and then it turned into just, um, uh, four, um, four of us, so it was just a normal tag, mm. and, uh, Dan, I can't remember when Dan messaged me, but I remember getting the message, and just being like, I was out at the time, I was at the beach at the time, and I looked at my phone, and I was like, I was like oh my God, I'm a, I'm a, I can't do anything this weekend, I'm booked on Eve now, so uh, any any plans I had are now cancelled. Um, but just the, and at the time, I mean, how long has it been? I think about nearly a year and a half. Like, that's, that's crazy that it's been yeah. a year and a half. And to think then, like, I'm still very fresh, but to mm. think then I was even more fresh <laughs> is like, oh, wow, you know? But, I mean, I don't know. He just, he, he wanted to book me. So I was like, yeah, sure, let's go. I mean, I don't know if I felt, I don't know. I feel like back then I didn't have as much confidence as I do now. Mm. I, I'm still definitely lacking parts of confidence, but I'm so much more like where, I don't know how to say it, but I just feel like my confidence is definitely growing and it's got so much stronger, which is like the best thing possible because 
um no yeah but going back to that i just i just i was like okay let's go even if it's just a one-time thing i'm happy like mm. yeah that, that it just it made my whole day so does dan does dan help with that the confidence side of it like does he does he give you sort of like that encouragement after matches and stuff like that you're on the right path that you're doing the right thing yeah for sure like he'll give um he'll give me feedback and all of that and i mean there's obviously a reason why he's trying to push me and um because i mean he must see something in me i suppose so yeah he he, he definitely helps like he gives me feedback and all of that and tells me what i'm doing right what i could do better sort of thing so yeah yeah for sure yeah yeah which is awesome which is awesome and like again in a very smooth tangent here you'll see um someone else who clearly sees something in you is nina samuels because she clearly knows that you're too good and that she's trying to usurp you at every point um mm. I mean, talk to me, talk to me about that because obviously she's been a, a bit of a bane for you at Eve, really. Oh, she has absolutely, <laughs> quite literally. I don't know how long it's even been now, but for what past five months, back and forth, back and forth, but still no match, yeah. still no match, still no one on one, anything like that. We've been in uh, tag teams against each other, but we've not actually faced off one on one in that ring. And it is bound to happen at some point, but now I literally have no idea when. But you want it. You want but that. Every, everyone wants that you. match. Everyone wants to see that. That's what we're all waiting for. That's what, if I'm honest, that's what I, I thought. That's what I'm waiting for. That's what I'm waiting for, you know. That's it's what. It's going to come. It will happen at some point, I well, promise. That's what I thought we were going to get in the She won, but I mean, Nina didn't even make the final, so, you know. Exactly. I just, I must be better than her. Yeah. She didn't even make the final, you yeah. know. But, Loser, yeah. right? Oh. Oh, she I can't. I didn't even have, yeah, I didn't even have time to think about her that day. And, you know, she behaved herself and didn't interrupt any of my matches. So, yeah, I'm she, happy about that. She can bake, though. We'll give her that. She's she's a decent baker. Oh, my God. I don't want to admit it. I don't want to admit it. But they're all right. They're okay, I, I guess. Yeah. They're all right. They're all right. There's nothing special. It's fine. Right, if it's I have fine. to say it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, brilliant, brilliant. Well, getting getting back to to Queendom and um and Miu, obviously, like I mean, how obviously you talk about how big a, a bigger match that is. Have you allowed yourself at all to think about what happens if if you beat Miu, if you win that belt? Um, yes, and and no, you know, it's just so. I have no idea how it's gonna go. Like, I have no idea what's going to happen. And I just, I feel like, I, don't, I just, I don't know. I literally don't know. I just, I, if I do win, it will just open up so many more doors and just mm. have so many, like, more, like, spotlight on, like, the way I perform and that, um, the importance to perform e even at a higher level than obviously what I'm doing now if I become the champion, you know. So for sure, like, I'll have to step up my game a whole lot more, you know. But it's the sort of thing we have to wait and see, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you talk about that because you talk about like that sort of moulds quite well into into the confidence side of thing. Like, I mean, like in terms of your confidence, you're running, in terms of your, your in-ring ability, do you feel that improvement? Do you see that improvement like sort of week by week, month by month for yourself? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I feel every time I get in the ring, I feel like I was better than I was the last time, which is obviously a very good thing. So in that aspect aspect as well, like I know I'm growing in my confidence. So anytime I'm in that ring and I have another match coming and I come away feeling like I've learned something new, I've learned something more that's going to help me in that next match. As long as I keep doing that i know i'm getting better and better so i'm on the right path in that sense yeah for sure you definitely are no you definitely are you're smashing it and like the thing is is um in terms of well in terms of moments i was actually gonna get onto this later but it's just popping into my head again so i'll ask it now um so you've won the she won you got a yeah. title match against me you uh for the eve title at wrestle queendom but yeah. will anything top being john cena for a night I was not expecting that question at all. No, I like to I like to throw the curveball every now and then. I suppose I suppose if I become the new champion and I beat me you, I will have to say that will top being John Cena for a night. 
but it's a hard push. <laughs> at the minute, it's John Cena on top, right? Oh, at the minute, yeah, that's like up there. I mean, like, you pulled it off brilliant. Like, you could see, like, the look on your face while you were doing it, like, that you were just buzzing for it. Oh, mate, I was, I was, that was just, my career peaked there, you know? <laughs> I loved it. It was so fun, so fun. I mean, that was a mental show as well, like, because, again, like, we said it before, but, like, I still think, and, like, loads of other people I've spoken to also as well, like, still think that that was, like, the best Eve show of the year, just because so much went wrong for, like, Dan and, like, you guys backstage and everything, and yet it was just so much fun because of the fact that everything went wrong and, like, it was just yeah. so off the wall. You just got to make the best of what you can of a bad situation, and it ended up being a fantastic show anyway, so... It just goes to show, really. Was Cena always the plan for you, though? Because obviously I know a few people pulled, like, double duty in the Rumble and, like, on the night and everything as well. Like, was it oh, always yeah. Cena? It was always going to be as, Cena. As soon as Dan sort of said, I was kind of like, oh, what is this limited to? But it's literally limited to, like, nothing. So I was just thinking, I'm going to have fun with this. And why not? I've got <laughs> I've got his merchandise, so let's go <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to admit it, you know? Mate, oh, it was great. It was unbelievable. It was brilliant. It was, you, know, you, what, you had, like, Kane Leverkusen, right, as well? Like, Alexis Falcon is... Uh, <laughs> like, oh, was, it was it so Peter K? Was it Peter K? Yeah, it was Peter K, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 that was yeah. just ridiculous stuff. Ridiculous. And, like, I hope I'm not spoiling it too much, because I know it's been in the Eve newsletter, so I don't know if anyone's watching this who doesn't subscribe to that, but, like, obviously it's coming up again next year in January, Multiverse Rumble. Oh, my God, I didn't even know that. Oh, do you not? Oh, yes. Oh, no, it was in the newsletter. Yeah, so... Oh Back, yes. you got to start thinking of a new one. I'm going to start thinking. Yeah. Tomorrow. You can go like even later, John Cena, because you were sort of more like, you know, um, like the, the early Cena there. So you go yeah, later Cena yeah, there. Yeah. Just the jorts and the haircut and oh. Oh my God, I can't wait. I actually can't wait. I'm so excited for that now. Yeah, you got to start, you got to start thinking of costumes earlier. It, ne it needs to top Cena. That's the problem now. You've started so high that it's got to, it's got to get better. Don't worry, I will. Uh, the expectations will be exceeded. So. <laughs> love it, love it. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for that. Well, obviously, we've spoken a lot about about Eve, but Eve isn't the only place you wrestle. Um, and you've also got title gold around your waist. Uh, probably. We talk about Southeast London. Let's talk about UKPW. Yeah. I mean, yeah. again, like a promotion that is really sort of like, and I don't know want to say underground, but it seems to go unnoticed. I think because London has the likes of like Eve and Rev Pro and Progress. Yeah. But UKPW put on some incredible shows, like, month on month. And obviously, it must mean a lot to you to, to hold about there, to, to be so sort of loved by them, both as a promotion and a fan base. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, And at UKPW, that's where I had my first match as Sapphire Reed. So oh, I've got my dog on the bed, by the way. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. But um, <laughs> we, we like it. We like scratch. No, it's fine. We, we like a pet um, cameo over here, so it's not a problem. We've had so plenty. Good, We've had plenty. Marley! Who's that? Aww. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's adorable. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Anyway, back to the question. No, it's fine. It's fine. Again, we love a cameo here. We had, like, Alexis Falcon has had her cats on. I think Casey Owens had her dog on as well. Like, we've oh, had... there we go, then. We've had oh, loads of pets. Go. You just added to the list. <laughs> um, but, yeah, UKBW, it was the first match I had there, so... And where it was, it is literally so local to me and mm. so near me, it meant a lot as well because I, I had family there that went to watch that for one of my first shows. So to be able to represent one of the titles there is is a great feeling. And it was my first title one as well. And I won it in a ladder match. So, <laughs> no, it was a really nice feeling, really cool. And I love wrestling there. You know, it's so fun. Mm. Um, they're they're family-friendly shows, but... The matches they put on are just... Some of them are literally amazing. They're hard hitting as well. Like, I remember, obviously, I couldn't make it, but I know, again, like, you and Tommy about the matches, like, the one you had over um, AEW weekend, and it yeah. was, like... And it was, like, it was you and Scotty and Kira and Roth. And, like, that's two ridiculously good matches that could, yeah, like, yeah, headline sure. any card up and down the country. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't hold back. It's yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I kill it. And that, that must be cool as well to, to have, again, like, so early on have, like, a, another promotion as well, like, put that title belt on you, have the one, then be like, you know, we want you to carry the company forward, especially, like you say, so, so early in your career. Yeah, definitely. Like, when they had plans for it, and then, like, for me winning it, uh, I wasn't sure, like, when it was going to happen, and they said, 
it's gonna it's gonna happen soon and i was like oh okay and then obviously uh it was it was like the table ladders and scares mm -hmm. um show and i had gira kamira for the 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 woman's title and then i lost that and then i was the surprise entrant in the uh six man ladder match so that was or five man i can't i can't remember how many but yeah i was a surprise entrance and uh no it was great because the crowd proper came up for it and it was just a nice it was just a great feeling you know and then i won it as well so yeah, yeah first title win right first title win how yeah. does that, how does that feel then and again in that moment like to know that you've like because again like for any wrestler starting out that's like that's a benchmark and automatically isn't it like first title so how, how does that feel for sure no, yeah, it was really special, special, because especially, like, I had my family with me as well, mm. and when it's local, they're, like, literally, where my family live, we're, like, in a 20-minute kind of, like, radius all from each other, so all my cousins and uh, my uncle, like, um, my nan and granddad, like, all came down and supported me, cheered me on, and then you've got all the others from South East London, like, all the boys, and... Um, yeah, to be able to like win that title there and have all that support as well is such a special feeling. And then just like the little girl inside of me holding up the championship is like, oh my god, <laughs> we're winning. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome. And like again, like you mentioned, because uh, like sort of like that community aspect almost of it is something that I think is is so like important as well. Because obviously, like again, we'll go back to the southeast number one, right? That's that's your chant, and like like all, all the guys know you like from the area and like from coming up through through that scene and like that just must be even more special again like sort of almost sort of representing southeast london in in that way like a home turf show oh yeah for sure yeah like, i think it's it's great as well because i think they love to see like southeast represent you know mm. so it's a win-win for all <laughs> yeah for sure for sure well like what is it like coming up in in that era because like so i i like moved to london like a few years ago but i was like raised in brighton and there was yeah. never much wrestling in brighton riptide wrestling came along in like 2017 but like there was never much in brighton um yeah. but like what is it like sort of like coming up as a wrestling fan in in that scene where you've got like these like smaller promotions all, all around you and then like the big ones like progress and rev pro and eve like on your doorstep like what is that like as as like a, a wrestling fan coming up who who you know wants to get into the business oh yeah i mean it's cool like it's so cool to know that there are all these different promotions like so many different types as well that are kind of that are very nearby and hopefully one day i'll be on the uh, the bigger ones i suppose you could call it but um no, yeah, because even as a fan, me and my dad would always go to the Rev Pros in London and all the progresses in the ballroom. Like, we absolutely loved it, especially when we started getting into the sort of indie wrestling mm. and like being a fan, especially around there where it's just it's a lot. You know, there's a lot of wrestling around there, so it was it was nice. So yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't know, I don't know if you, I don't know if you know this, but you're on those shows now, right? You know that, right? Like you, you get to wrestle on those yeah. shows now. <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a weird feeling. It's cool as hell. It must be it's like a sort of cool. real pinch yourself moment. Mm -hmm, for sure, like a full circle. It's great. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's awesome. And actually, we talk about London promotions. Um, I think this goes out in time because I think this goes out a couple of days before. But obviously, you're a, a purpose on November the 10th. Yes. Um, against your arch frenemy. Is that the right word in Amira? <laughs> Yes, and Maya and Maya Matthews, what's going on there? What's, we asked, we had a mirror on, obviously with with uh, with Michael, and and she spoke a bit about it. But what's what's happening there? Because like I feel like you were friends, and now you're not, and now it's all become a bit haywire. Like what's going on? You know what? It is very much a love hate relationship with the mirror. Uh, <laughs> she's just crazy, and do you know what? She she started all of this at purpose, right? She started all of this because she's jealous. I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't do anything. I'm just I'm good at what I do, apparently. She didn't like that. So now she's run off to Maya Matthews and tried to get her on her side. But I don't know what's going on. She's just... Mental. It's, it's, a, it's a jealousy up. thing, isn't it? We're seeing it. We're seeing it with Nina. We're seeing it with Amira. It's a, it's a jealousy thing here. It's You're really creeping in. It's a pattern, you know. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I bet you're looking forward to beating her up, though, on, on I purpose. I can't wait. Yeah. Honestly, it's going to be the highlight 
of my whole year, so I can't wait. <laughs> Actually, you should speak of speak about unbelievable matches. That match that you and Maya had at the last Purpose show with uh, with Sunshine Machine was unbelievable. Like oh. genuinely, I thought like one of the best tag matches I've seen all year. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I I've really enjoyed that match. It was I'm not very used to tag matches, mm. obviously, because um I don't even know. I think I've literally only ever been in like three like three proper tag matches so i mean i knew mambo and tk were gonna help us out a bunch so they're a little more in sync aren't they they've had a lot of practice yeah so like i wasn't feeling as much pressure i was like it's, they know what we're doing it's fine like we, we got this we've got like the best guys possible to help us through it and um because i i think where obviously the lack i've had of tag matches i was like oh no i don't do you know what I mean? My creative creativity there isn't as as if mm. as if it was a singles match. But like once we started, it started all coming together. I was like, oh man, yeah, this is gonna be good. And then I came back and I was like, oh, that's the best tag match I've had. I mean, I've only had like three or four, but that was sick, you know. And it made me uh, just it kind of made me want to do more now because of how much I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's mad because I didn't know you'd only had that few. Like watching that match, I wouldn't know you'd had that few tag matches. Like, oh, well, you, that's because Mambo and Team. Nah, you, you and Maya, though, again, were super in sync with it. Like, you were really oh, yeah, good we together. Gave it, we gave it, for sure. Like, ge- just... genuinely, like, I think you and her are, like, if I was going to say, like, two of the best, like, young talents we have on the scene at the minute, I'd say it's you and her. Like, oh, thank you, you guys so are crushing much. it. You're really crushing it. <laughs> but, um, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Like, it's just, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know what I'll say apart from the fact it's just going that well for you. I just feel like this year's been awesome for you. And, like... I'm just excited to see where you go from from here because I normally say to people like, "What's what's next for you?" But obviously, we've got Queendom coming up. Uh, you might have a purpose title shot as well if if you win that three at purpose. So, exactly. I mean, even all those aside, like, what would what would be like a good year next year for for you for Sapphire Reed? Like, if we were talking back end of 2024, and I was to say, "Has it been a good year for you?" What what would you think? Like what? 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 Not more. What more is there to achieve? Because there's still loads more for you to achieve. Yeah. But like, what will constitute like a, a good year for you next year? More gold around my waist. Uh, I definitely want to travel up north more, mm. do more shows up there, and around like Europe. Like I just want to travel Europe more and get. I've got a few um, some cool dates next year. Nice. Um, which obviously I can't say yet, but no, um, sure. in some other countries, which is really cool. So I think just getting my name out there outside of the UK a little bit more, you know, and having more just consistent matches here, bangers, hopefully, yeah. and just traveling up and down. Like, I don't want to just be in one place. I don't want to just be in London. I want to be well worldwide, you know. Yeah. If I could go to America next year, I will like I just want to whatever like there's nothing where I'm like oh I'm gonna stop when I'm here mm. if I can if opportunity keep, opportunities keep coming I want to be like yes 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 yeah you know anything that can just help me in my career but yeah I mean I know it sounds like a lot but I just want to just anything to get my name out there more more promotions more countries, more wrestlers to wrestle, you know, just yeah. anything, everything. Well, I mean, if it's any signifier, like, I know a few fans in America who know you because they saw your match at Eve with Billy Starks. Oh, my God. And, that. like, and they've seen that. Like, I know a few people who have, like, I've either recommended it to them or, like, they said, I've seen this match. And I was like, oh, yeah, it was a great match. Oh, like, sick. So we might need that round two in America. Oh, mate, across the pond, for sure. I was going to say, like, it was super weird. I don't know if you if you know, like, um, actually, you probably heard on Twitter and stuff, but, like, she won um, a tournament. I can't remember what the promotion was. It was the one that Renee Paquette and, and Mox were on. Um, she won that tournament. Like, the same night you won, she won. Yes. And yeah, I was like, that's yeah. so fucking good. I saw that. I saw that. I was like, yes, mate, let's go. That was such good symmetry. And that match was a banger as well. Like, again, like, another, like, young wrestler coming up as well. That must have been fun. That must have been a fun match, yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I saw. I can't. I don't know who tagged me in it, but um, it was under her post, and then she, uh, I think she commented under it saying, "Oh no way, Saf won as well." Like, do you know what I mean? What a good night, sort of thing. But no, yeah, it was cool. It was a funny moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it, you guys had a great match as well. Like, you really did. Like, that was that was a brilliant one. And not like I just I feel like you can make a whole list of like matches that have been absolute bangers that you've had this year. <laughs> 
Like, I don't know how you pick one. Like, <laughs> I mean, I've had so many favourites. Like, I, I can't choose, I don't think. I think I think Mercedes Martinez was just so, just so different. Like, mm. for me, just the whole, the way it was, like, the layout. The, I, I, that is the most I've ever came back and been like, I've learned so much. Yeah. You know, and I've taken so much away to try and... Um, keep it in my head mm. and use things for next time and just the way she thinks is just great you know and yeah obviously she's been doing such doing it for such a long time and it's just it was just a nice nice opportunity an amazing opportunity to be able to learn from her and mm. take the advice i can take from her because she's just She's Mercedes Martinez. Yeah, so, yeah, she's yeah. a legend. She's a legend. Was she good with you, like before, like before and after the match? Was she giving you like oh, loads for of? Sure, life? yeah, man. She's she's really nice. She's she's a bit scary, <laughs> but I think that's just because I'm. Uh, I just think she's really good, and but you know that's me getting my head like, oh, she's really good. I hope I'm good. I hope she likes the match, you know, sort of thing. So. No, I'm yeah. sure she did. I'm sure she did. I know that, like, I know, again, just like I know generally that Dan raves about it all the time. So like, and I know that other fans do as well. So like. You're doing something right. You guys are doing something right. For sure. For sure. But that's cool. That's really cool. And like, we always end like uh, on the sort of podcast with a couple of fun features. So we've got a bit of time left. And I think we've got a bit of time for both of our features here. So we'll get through them. Um, but obviously, we've spoken a lot about Eve uh, tonight. Um, so we're going to we're gonna put that to the side for a sec. Because obviously, you're a champion UKPW. And this, uh, this feature is called Dishing the Dirt. Oh, no. And uh, so I'm going to ask you some questions and I want you to let me know which member of the UK PW locker room most relates to each thing. Oh, no. OK. It's all right. Some Most of them are pretty good. Like we start okay. off with like a, a little bit that's like, I guess, a dirt one. But oh, like no. the rest are generally pretty positive things. Yeah. So okay. Uh, okay. so the first one, the first one is um, who uh, who has the worst music taste? It doesn't have to necessarily be in the locker room, but like people you travel with or like see it like outside of shows and stuff. Music taste? Oh. Probably me. <laughs> what do you go for? What do you listen to? Like, kind of a bit of everything, but I... Oh, no, I can't say this. <laughs> oh, you've got it now. You've got it now. <laughs> but, like, I will go from like drum and bass music to one direction and Billie <laughs> eilish like all in the same playlist you know what i mean and then one second one direction will just come on and then everyone will be like what <laughs> why have you gone from that to that oh my god that is very random that's fine though i think that's like i think that's all right I like that's fair. i mean i think everyone else probably has much better taste yeah. than me i'm just kind of I wouldn't say that I wouldn't say that I wouldn't say that I think like drum and bass isn't isn't my sort of thing but like you know like One Direction is not really my sort of thing either but like everyone likes every, everyone likes a pop like everyone likes a pop banger at a certain point yeah. right like when the mood's right like that's fine there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing You're wrong with that to make me feel better now aren't you <laughs> no not at all no, no 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 I mean like so in, in, like from my friends and in my circle like I think I have the worst music taste because I'm like big on like pop punk and heavy metal yeah, so yeah, like yeah. so like but like none of my mates like that so like mm -hmm. for my mates like i have the worst music taste yeah i suppose it just depends on who you are exactly you know? exactly exactly it's all subjective it's all subjective but i respect it i respect it <laughs> um, um the next one is who's the who's the comedian of the locker room who can you always count on to make you laugh the most i'm trying to think who's always like at the shows mm. I don't know. I need to think. I don't, I just, I'm just sitting here thinking now. We can extend it to the Eve locker room as well if it helps sort of like widen the wrestlers you can choose from. Yeah. Do you know what? Danny Black and Joe Lander make me laugh. Oh, yeah, they're great. <laughs> they're, they're funny. And for Eve, I'm oh, Sky. Sky. <laughs> Sky and um, the girls from the North just start. <laughs> Sky, Sky's brilliant. I don't know how like anyone who faces her in the ring doesn't just like break automatically. Like when she starts like doing her grinding and stuff, I'm like, what? Like, how how are they keeping a straight face? <laughs> I don't know. She's so funny. I love her. Yeah, she's brilliant. She's brilliant. Love the guns as well. Big out shout out to Sky's guns. Love them. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have them yet. <laughs> 
<laughs> one day maybe one day one day one day, one day, yeah, one day. You, you do pose off or something yeah 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 one day, one day, one day bigger than hands. Uh, the next one is um, either either pre-show or like getting ready to leave after your show. Who takes the longest to get ready? Who's always like the last one out of the locker room? To be fair, if you're not the last one out, you might not know who the last one out is. So that seems like it might be an unfair question. <laughs> you know, if it's at Eve, it's always me. Yeah. Like, a lot, because I always forget something. I'm literally always back and forth. I'll, I'll say bye to everyone and then come back in and be like, oh, sorry, I forgot my straighteners. Bye. Go back, come back. Oh, sorry, I forgot my eyelash curlers. Like, every time. Like, the amount of times I've left, like, my makeup there or I've left my jacket there too many times like you'd think i would learn but i've just not learned yet amazing so, so yeah probably for that one probably me oh my god have you have you ever have you ever left it there too long like where you go back and the venue shut once you realize well if i'm already on my way home i'm just like oh well it's yeah. a bit late now hopefully someone has it yeah or you're I'll someone yeah just say please anyone just grab it you know but um there was a time when uh it was at the um oh, the dome it was at the dome and mm. i left my jacket there and obviously i couldn't get it back but um someone emailed them and they kept it safe thank god and, I, and it was all there it was all fine but i'm just like oh if that was like up north or something i wasn't getting that oh back. that's the one you don't want is it you get a north booking yeah. and like you're like traveling back you're on the train you're like yeah. oh fuck for sure oh, it's not yeah, what you want. I'm just i forget you gotta set reminders on your phone or something like every five minutes, remember this, remember this. I actually do. I, I tell myself I'm going to do that and then I just don't, so. Yeah, I get it. I'm the same. I'm the same. Uh, the next, well, the next one is always, is, is always who's brings, who brings like the best food or snacks, but are we, have we established it's Nina? Everyone else at Eve says it's Nina. Like, I mean, we don't have to big her up again, but like everyone else says it is. Like, I've it's never... Nina. It's Nina, but only because she's the only one that brings snacks. <laughs> but that's because that's because she's that good that no one else brings. They're like, oh, Nina will bring. It's fine. I suppose. Maybe <laughs> I'll start making my own cookies and my own brownies. Oh, that would be the rivalry, wouldn't it? That reignites the rivalry again. You're trying to usurp her position as, like, star Nina, baker. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Don't. Nina, don't Sapphire's don't coming for you. If they're really bad, then I can't live with myself if they're bad. <laughs> that would be awkward, wouldn't it? Like, you come in all proud of yourself. Like, yeah, I'm going to take her spot. And everyone's like, nah. Nah, just the mid, so. <laughs> yeah, maybe don't go head to head with her on that. In the ring. In the ring, you can beat her up. In That's the fine. Ring. In, in the, the ring. In the ring, absolutely fine. Yeah, nice. A no. off, maybe not. No, 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 no. We'll leave that. We'll leave that. Uh, the next one is, um, so this is, this is the only other one that I say is like a little bit of like dirt rather than a positive one. So we're talking out the ring now. We're talking, you've all left for the night. This is, you know, not in your ring gear. You've all left. Who has the worst dress sense? The worst. <laughs> and again, it's like the music, right? It's all subjective, right? So like, but does anyone come in wearing something that you're like, what are you wearing? I will say we've had before, we've had before Alexis Falcon and her Crocs called out because Crocs are very divisive, right? Crocs are very... I love Crocs though. <laughs> I love Crocs. Oh, Crocs There's are very like... Marmite. I just, uh, the worst dress. I just, I feel like... Most people just come in. I don't know. I actually don't know. I feel like I don't pay attention enough to know. Mm. <laughs> I'm just gonna say. I'm just gonna say Amira because that's just funny. Yeah, so yeah. We'll keep the few going. Yeah. We'll, we'll keep that going. Yeah. She brings it out. She brings it out, doesn't she? For the Rev Pro show, she brings it out. But other, everywhere else, nah. Everywhere else, nah. Nah, nah. nah. Just. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, the next one's nicer because the next one is um again. We're in a, a sort of the world where you've forgotten your gear for a show, and we're in we're in a world where one size fits all, and you wanna you've got to borrow someone else's gear for the night. Who's whose gear do you look at and you're like I could pull that off like I'd look good in that. Oh my god. Um... It's a lot to choose from. I mean, like you wrestle on some shows with people that have got very good gear. Do you know what? I feel like there's a few, because, but then I don't know if I would look good in it. Mm. But I just like the way, like, like Rio's gear. I love Rio's gear, but 
I think that's just because it's Rio and mm. she just looks so good in it and <laughs> she's fucking jacked. So, like, but if I wore it, I don't know, I would just like a skinny little girl. No, so I reckon like, you could put it off. Like, the one leg open, like, everything. That's a, that's a good look. That's a solid yeah, look for a wrestler. Like, I love her gear. Um, Nightshade, I feel like, because, mm. because where it's so different from mine, I love, like, the singlet. Do you know what I mean? I just yeah. I wonder what I'll be like in that. So give that a go as well, you know? That's a good and one. That's yeah. when you go, like, dark sapphire. That's, like, a dark yeah. sapphire look. Yeah. Uh-huh. Nice. Yeah, that one. Yeah. And that... then who else? Oh, my God. I know I'm going to, like, kick myself. Oh, my God. I've got one, but it's not... They're not, like, in the locker room. Go on. Charlie Evans. Oh, Chevs. Oh, no. Yeah, we love Chevs. She's, she's, yeah. she's like... Eve, like, cult hero, though, right? We can allow that. Yeah, she's so fine. Counts, you're yeah. Right. Sorry. No, shout out Chev. She's always kills it with the gear. Uh huh. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. But again. Yeah, I'll, I'll say them free. But again, none of them have John Cena gear, do they? So, hmm. well, bring it back to that. Yeah, I mean, like, true, yeah. they're, all lo- they're all looking at you being like, oh, I wish I had the John Cena gear. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I'm the real winner here. Exactly. <laughs> Love it. Uh, the next one I always say is like a little redundant to ask wrestlers, but who's the most competitive? Mm, competitive. Yeah, it doesn't have to be necessarily in the ring. It could be for anything. Like if you're just hanging out like socially afterwards or whatever, like it can be for literally anything. Like anyone who really gets competitive about something. I think Amira. Yeah, that does not surprise me. Because I that... feel like she just, she could be so wrong about something, but... <laughs> She wants to be right. Oh, she'll so. fight it. Yeah, she'll fight her corner. <laughs> but like in, in in a in a funny way, you know, not yeah. in like a I'm right, you're wrong way, yeah. but just in a no, I'm definitely right. Yeah. I'm going to prove you I'm right. So <laughs> no, I love that. So, yeah, uh, probably her. I'd, I'd say nice, nice. Uh, there's only a couple left. The next one is um. Again, we're back in a hypothetical world and everyone in the locker room has invited you to a party. They're all hosting different parties. It's all on the same night though, so you can only go to one. Who are you picking? Who who in the locker room do you think will throw the best party? The one that you need to be at? I think I think Sky Smithson, so everyone could have a wiggle off. Yeah. <laughs> a, <laughs> a Sky party would be fun. No one's beating the Sky Wiggle though. That's the thing. Like, yeah, she'd be she'd be like, oh, let's do a wiggle off, knowing full well she's gonna knowing win. That she would win. Yeah. I just feel like I wouldn't know what to expect, and so I want to go there. Yeah, it's the one with the most like unknown, right? The most, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, you know something just weird's gonna happen. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to stick with that, I think. Nice, nice. Oh, a good... no, no, Session Moth, Session Moth. Oh, of course, of course. Oh How God. can you say best party and not say Moth? It's got to be I Moth. I know, I, I forgot. It's oh got to be Moth. The dance music will be blaring, it'll be like, be there manic. Go. Be grinding on everyone, it'll be great. There we go, there we go. That's my answer. <laughs> Love it, good answer, good answer. Good save as well, good save. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the uh, the last one is, um, is uh, who would you choose... To have your back as your partner in the zombie apocalypse. Oh, God. I always say to people, though, you can use them for whatever means you want. You know what I mean? You can, like, sort of throw them to the wolves kind of thing or can use them as, like, as like a buffer. Like, it can be for whatever reason you want them to be your partner. Um, is this a zombie apocalypse? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with proper World War Z thing. You know, Brad Pitt's fucked off already. Okay. Like... You gotta find someone else. Maybe, maybe like Maybe like Chantel Jordan, so oh. she can just kick everyone's all the zombies' heads off. Yeah, you know? no, those <laughs> those kicks would be yeah, for some mean kicks. Yeah. You know I mean you don't you don't need any weapons. No. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a I, good I, choice. I was gonna say her. She's the I feel like she's the first first name that pops into my head yeah no she's tough as nails for sure yeah that's a good choice i like that i respect yeah. that. that's a good choice that's a good choice <laughs> nice well we learned about the eve locker room and our final feature is now learning a little bit more about you but not about you sapphire Reed. this is about you more like getting to know you as as, as behind the wrestler okay. um so this is called anatomy of a pro wrestler and it's essentially like what makes you you kind of stuff mm-hmm. so again i'm just going to go through some like quick fiery questions and you let me know what comes to mind Mm-hmm. So, um, so the first one is, uh, what is your favorite post show, a uh, post pinfall pig out meal? What, so what I eat after the show? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so like, yeah, like, you know, coming back from a show, like what, what do you really fancy? What's your go-to? Oh my God. 
I, I would say McDonald's is probably the one everyone would just go to because it's yeah. always there. Yeah. But but if we're like going through a high street somewhere and we're like not on the motorway, mm. I love a good kebab. Like, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I love a kebab. So. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a good one down the road in there from the dome. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. I like just. Oh yeah, I would eat. I could eat a kebab all day long. Yeah, that's a strong choice. What do you What do you go for? Like, how do you fill it essentially? Um, just a doner, just a dirty doner. All the salad, no salad. Salad, yeah, yeah. I, I like all the salad as well. You know, nice. like the jalapenos, all of that. Chili yeah, sauce and just garlic mayo. Ah, oh, strong. See, I go garlic both though. Mayo. Why pick? Why pick? You know. Oh man, no, I've got to go garlic mayo. I, I don't like sweet chili sauce that much. You know. Ah. Oh unbelievable unbelievable but it's a fair choice i like the kebab choice that's a good one i don't think we've had that before i don't think anyone said that before so i like that i respect that but that's again that's the londoner right there we go exactly yeah no you know what to do yeah you know know. um the the next one is again food related but it's your what would your like death row last meal be last meal it's making this making me hungry you know yeah i know it always does for me always does for me (laughs) Uh, do you know what? If I, oh, this is gonna sound so boring. I would need to sit here and actually actually think. But I I love a good stack of pancakes. Oh, oh yeah, just pancakes and syrup. Nice. Um, you go with, like thick or thin. Thick. Nice. Thick, like thick American pancakes, all stacked, just stack and stack and stack. Yes. Um, but like that's, I suppose that's like a dessert for a meal. I actually don't know. No, it's not a dessert. You go again when wet. Like I'm not going to say if because it's going to be a when. You'll be out there eventually. But when you get to America, like that, that's <laughs> breakfast out there, isn't there? You see it all the time. Like oh my god, you're going to be yeah. in dreamland. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like such a boring answer. No, that's good. I like it. I like it. Stack like a good, like a stack of pancakes. A stack of pancakes when they're well made as well. Like nothing Mm. better. Like nothing beats them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that. I like it. I like it. Uh, The next one is uh, the song that gets you the most hyped. Mm. Mm. Then one particular one like you can always count on to like whether you're at like the gym or whatever like whatever you're getting yeah, hyped do you up know for. What? Probably like Imagine Dragons. Probably like. Is it radioactive? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. But but that does, that one as well. Yeah. <laughs> but probably Believer by Imagine Dragons. I'm nice. Just, I really like Imagine Dragons. If you can tell. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I'm getting that sense now. I'm getting that sense. At, fir- at first, I thought it was just part of the gimmick, but now I'm just sensing that it's just a. <laughs> I'm just a fan girl. Yeah, you so. just evolved the gimmick from I'm like an Imagine Dragon. Right? <laughs> Literally, oh my god. Love yeah, it. Probably, probably one of their songs. Um, uh, do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna watch this back and be like, why did I not say this or that? But you know, if <laughs> nice. I'm thinking on the spot, yeah, probably that. No, that's fine. If if we're in the YouTube comments as well, feel free to just leave a comment, being like, oh, I should have <laughs> said this for this and this Actually, for this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the next one is uh, the movie that I'd show the locker room. I always say, like, it doesn't have to necessarily be your favourite movie, but the movie you think everyone should see at some point. Oh, my God. It feels like a big thing. It's, this isn't it, just my favourite movie. This is what what you all need to see. Yeah, this is these are the tough questions. We ask the tough questions here. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, I can't say anything bad. I can't say anything shit now. It needs to be. It needs it's got to be a good one. To be fair, it doesn't have to be a good one. We've had some mm. terrible movies said on this, like, really bad. <laughs> Do you know what? Oh, my God. What do you go for movie-wise? What, what do you I like, generally? I like a bit of everything. Like, I like horrors. Um, I, do, I, I don't know. Oh, my God, I don't know. Because I was originally, right, I was going to say Tarzan. <laughs> Only. Tarzan. Wait, you mean the like the, the original, right? Though the animated the one. Original, oh yeah, 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 that's a yeah, that's a good one. one. I was gonna say that because I've wanted. I keep saying to myself, I need to go back and watch that. I need to go back and watch that because I've been listening to like all the soundtrack and it just makes me cry. <laughs> I love Tarzan. Oh my god, that's a great film. I know. Uh, I'm just trying to think of like 
an iconic movie that people be like, oh yeah, but no. Oh, no, no, no. The better ones are the deep, but the one the better ones are the not iconic movies. Those are the ones you want to see. No, Tarzan's a great shout. I was yeah, like, oh, it's amazing. It makes I, me cry every time. I see him watch that. I mean, I'm not in the locker room. If I was in the locker room and you brought in Tarzan, I'd be like, fuck yeah, fuck the match. Like, yeah, let's okay, watch, you know let's watch Tarzan. Tarzan <laughs> yeah. Tarzan. The match can wait, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's a good shout. I like it. I like it. Good. Uh, the next one is is odd because like again, it feels bad because you make me feel very old because because you're very young and you've done so much already. It makes me feel very old. But the next question is my first job. Oh, and I normally have to tell. Job was. Hmm. What my first? Yeah, job yeah, was? yeah. Okay. Because I know uh, I know. I, norm- uh, I worked at McDonald's. Oh, classic. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah love it. Was, uh, oh, I can't remember how old I was. I mean, it was literally only like three years. I was going to say, surely it was just like last week, no, right? No, like, I think I was 17. Nice. 17. So I was trying to think the pandemic. Obviously, the pa- there was a pandemic when yeah. I was like 16, so I couldn't really get a job. Yeah. And then after the pandemic or kind of in oh and my out God, of the wish- pandemic. Yeah, I wish I was 16 in the pandemic. That makes me feel even older now. Oh, my God. I was oh, so yeah, I was I so didn't... far off 16 in the pandemic. Uh-huh. I didn't even have to do my GCSEs. Oh, like, I was that year, you know. Damn, so. <laughs> damn. That's okay. How was McDonald's? Was that fun? You enjoy it? <laughs> yes and no. I enjoyed the people. Well, some of the mm. people, but uh, it's just I can't stand like customer service. Yeah. Because after I was in McDonald's, I just wanted to get out. I was like, I need to get out of McDonald's. Yeah. And I went to Aldi for like not even two months <laughs> like i think two three months and i was like this is like the hardest thing i've ever done in my life but I just, people that work in retail seriously i can't do it oh I mate i can't do it anymore like no yeah but, and then i left aldi and then um and now i'm a dog walker so. nice that's cool though that's cute i like yeah. that i like oh, that yeah, sure. yeah i like that a lot i won't tell my partner because she'll try and come with you and like steal all the dogs yeah, she is, like, like, the good thing about it, it doesn't feel like a job. Mm. You know, just you know, what I mean, I just enjoy it. So yeah, nice. I like so, that. Yeah, McDonald's, ugh, McDonald's just. I feel like McDonald's is the one, like, you know, when you're growing up, when you're, like, five or six, you're like, oh, it'd be so cool to work at McDonald's. You get free yeah, burgers yeah, and stuff, yeah. and then you do it, and you're like, oh, my God. It's not. It's stressful. <laughs> it's just so long. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I'm with you. That's that's fair. That's fair. But, again, like, you say with retail and stuff, like, you know retail's tough because of the amount of wrestlers we've had on this podcast that say they, like, that working in retail is way tougher because, like, it's just hell. <laughs> just the customers man like people are rude for no oh, reason people are the I worst don't get it. like people I don't are get the it. worst people are terrible people are just awful like, <laughs> makes me angry no yeah yeah no i get you i get you uh the next one is um the next one gets a little deep because it's your greatest fear oh my greatest fear um i don't know I mean, I have a lot of fears. Mm. It doesn't have to be anything too deep, like, if you don't want it to be, like, that's, like... <clears throat> but we've had a whole range here again. We've had, like, even stuff that I'd never even thought of as a fear. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? I used to be really scared of flying, like, mm. planes. Um, I am quite a nervous flyer, but... Yeah, I'm with I'm you there. Of, Same. I've kind of tried to kick myself up the arse about it, because I'm like... If you want to wrestle, you need to get used to flying everywhere one day. Yeah. So just, you know, I, I've got better. Uh, but I used to be really bad with it. Like, mm. it's just, I just don't understand how planes work. But that's another conversation. <laughs> no, I get um, you though. I'm getting, I'm like, this shouldn't be in the air. How is this in the air right now? Like, what is happening? Yeah. I've, and then, honestly, probably, probably not being able to do what I love. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like... So, so wrestling pretty much, I suppose. I suppose yeah. that's kind of a fear in itself, whether it's like an injury, like touch woods, like, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I suppose that's sort of a big fear, not being able to make a, a career out of something you love. And mm. I suppose that's one of them as well, but... No, I get that. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, there's a load of different ones, like, I could say, but... <laughs> 
you know, I mean, spiders, I, I hate spiders. Oh, no, can't do spiders. Yeah, I no. I do little ones, little ones, but if they're bigger than a daddy long legs. Oh, I hate daddy long legs. No, they freak me out the most. Oh. But I, I won't kill them. I won't kill them. Oh, my God, do you know what? Stepping on snails and slugs. That's Ooh. one of my biggest Oh yeah, like oh no, that's a real like cringe uh-huh. moment. Yeah, like a... when you hear it crack as well, mm. you hear it crack. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. Oh no, I'm with you there. Yeah, those are, those are very understandable. Like you yeah. Sound so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get them though. I get them though. They're very like oh cringe worthy stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. On the uh, on the lighter side, the next one is uh, your favorite animal. Elephants. Nice. That's a good shout. Yeah. Elephants are cool. They're, they're just so big and cute. Like, I don't, <laughs> and cows. I love cows. You know, like, I was going to be generic and say a dog, but... I was I was going to say, I thought you'd say a dog with all the, like, the... Yeah, I mean, they are, but, I mean, if we're going to actually... I just feel like anyone would say a dog, you know, but... Yeah, elephants in, like, are cute, wild. though. Like, when you see, like, videos of the baby ones, when you see videos of, like, baby elephants, like, playing in the mud and stuff, you're like, oh, that's... Oh, I know, I know, yeah, like, I I just, I love animals anyway, but yeah. I think elephants and just cows. Cows are so cute. Cows are underrated. I, they're, like, they're... They are. They're... They really are. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with them. Yeah. <laughs> they're my favourite animals. Like them. I like it. Uh, the next one is... Uh, the next one's the only wrestling one on the list. It's your favourite match stipulation. And you can say but, like a singles match. A singles match does count, like if you if you want to say that. What like for me to to watch or for me to wrestle in? Um, if they're different, let's say both. But it can be whichever you want. <laughs> I mean, for me, I've not I've not really had any match stipulations mm. before. So, at the moment. You've had a ladder match. You've done a ladder match. Oh, I've done a ladder match, actually, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, what about two watch, then? Like Two watch? Oh, do you know what? Probably ladder matches. Like, I do I do like a good ladder match, but then... I don't know. A ladder match like, is always like a good challenge. Like an Iron Man match, mm. you know, like a good Iron Man match. Um, MJF and Daniel Bryan, oh my God. Yeah. Great match. Um, oh my god, I don't have like a favorite. I don't think I have like a favorite stipulation. No, that's fair. But, that's fair. But I do, I do like the intensity of like an Iron Man match, mm. where it's like, oh my god, what's going to happen? Who's going to get the last pin or whatever it is? Yeah. So uh, probably I'm going to say that as like a safe bet for now. Nice, nice. I mean, like again, talk about Iron Man matches. Like, like the one million me you had at Eve was bonkers, mm. ridiculously good. That was one of those ones where you're on the edge of the seat because you're like. You're like, shit, is Millie going to do it? She's going to get it. And then, oh. Yeah, literally. That uh-huh. was, yeah. yeah. No, Iron Man's it's a good just... shout. Mm-hmm. That is a good shout. Um, where's my list gone? I've lost the list. There it is. Uh, the next one is uh, my favourite place in the world. <gasps> in the world? Mm. It can be as big my... or small as you want, though. Like, we've had people say countries. Like, Scotty Rourke said it was his bed. So, like, yeah. it can be anything in between. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Do you know what? My favourite place that I've been to, probably probably Cornwall, like Newquay in Cornwall, because uh, just it's so beautiful. The Super beach pretty. is just so beautiful. But I'm going, I'm going to um, Windermere this weekend with nice. my girlfriend. So uh, she doesn't know we're going. So <laughs> luckily, um, this comes like, out after that, so that's fine. No spoilers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all good. So I think after then, that will be one of my favourite places to go because I've just seen like so many pictures and videos and just everything so like i just can't wait to go out there and explore so yeah i, I love think, that i think that that's going to be one of my favorite places but other than that i'm trying to think like country wise well i was going to say because like the, the last question is what's your dream holiday destination dream holiday destination yeah so what would that be if we're doing like another country uh Destination. Just somewhere with a nice sunset and a nice sunrise and just warm when you wake up. Anywhere that's anywhere that's like that, you know. Nice. I suppose not a specific place because I've not I've not seen enough. Do you sure. know what I mean to know. So 
Somewhere warm, though. You prefer the warm. Oh, yeah, somewhere warm, somewhere warm, and I can just wake up, and I'm like, oh, the heat is just hitting me, you know? Nice. Are you... some, somewhere, yeah, somewhere with, like, a beautiful view, and just a really nice sunrise or a sunset. Nice. Nice. You know, just, are you what like what sort of holiday are you? Do you like do you like to chill or do you like to like go out and do stuff like adventuring? I, I I'm I'm a bit of an in betweener, mm. but I but I can only lay on a sunbed for so long. Like yeah. After like thirty minutes, I'm like, okay, let's jump in the pool now. And then like I do like to be active on holiday, but as long as there's a pool there and mm. the beach is there. And I've got a floaty and a ball or something like that. Like, I'm such a kid. No, that's cool. That's fair. I, as long as I've got something to keep me going. You no. Know? And, and like a snack bar. So, yeah, just, just some simple activities for me to, you know. But uh, do you know what? Now you've said, like, now you've said that as in, oh, now I'm thinking about what my dream holiday like, destination would be. If it was I was going to say, like, literally, from what you've said, all you've described to me is, like, when I've been to the south of France. Like South of France is like one of my favorite I've never holidays. Been there. I've never oh, been I, re- I recommend it. Like, but you know what? I really want to go. I, w- I want to do skiing. Like, I want to do nice I do and skiing. I've never been anywhere like that. Um, that's something that I would love to try, or somewhere that I'd love to travel to. So yeah, I suppose somewhere like that. But that's that's like a new thing that I would like mm. to do. You know? Yeah, that's a proper like adventure holiday. Yeah, yeah. No, I like it. I like it. Plenty of time, though. Plenty of time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, love it. Love it. Well, that brings us oh, very nicely to, to the end of the podcast. Sapphire Reed, oh, thank you. you so much for, for coming on. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I have. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. And, like, yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been great talking all things EU and UKPW and, like, just seeing your rise, man. Cause, like, you've, you've done so well, like, over the last couple of years. Like, it's, it's really been a joy to watch. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, we always uh, end with with a, a new feature that we've got here on the podcast where our last guest leaves a question for our next guest. Um, but I'm not allowed to tell you who the guest was. Um, although you could probably just look on our YouTube and find out. But <laughs> but um, so and this is this is not wrestling related because it doesn't have to be wrestling related. Um, okay. And it's always a bit random. Uh, but the question you've been left is. If you had to delete all but three apps on your phone, which three apps would you keep? What are the necessities? We're going to say, like, the calling and the texting count automatically, like the simple okay. phone stuff, but all the extras that you need to download are the ones that you've got to delete. So which three um, are you keeping? I'd probably keep... Instagram because I'm most active like on there like posting wise. Mm. Um, TikTok because I just I I am I have to admit it I will sit there and just scroll for hours like before bed I'm just <laughs> it's just it's so bad but I love it. Um, and you know what? I never used to like. I'm gonna call it Twitter. I'm, I'm calling it. Twitter. Oh no, it's not X. No, it's always Twitter. It's not X. Yeah. It's Twitter. Um, I never used to be a fan of Twitter, but recently I've started. I've started using it a bit more. I want to. I don't know if I'm being silly. Oh, I need to think. You got to think. You know, are there any other necessity apps you need? That's the thing. Oh. Uh, the person that asked the question. Not- no, sorry, I was going to say the person that asked the question is like, no one ever says like, they said it's some like something they normally ask people when they see them at shows. And no one ever says like a banking app or like Safari or whatever. Like people always, people always forget like that stuff. And they're like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, can't, can't just go social media. Yeah. Because my initial I answer like. I have a lot of apps on my phone, you know, so I, I would say them too. And then, mm, I'm not going to say Twitter, actually, because I could just use Instagram. Yeah, Twitter's too much of a cesspit anyway, to be fair. And then maybe, like, hmm, maybe Snapchat, because, you know, when you have, like, the memories that pop up. Nice. And I would hate for all of my memories to disappear. Sure, sure. I like it. I sound like such a teenager. You do. I was going to say, those three choices just make me feel even older, so thank you for that. (laughs) Thank you wonderful like oh. see i would probably pick twitter and then i'd pick like i don't know two two things that aren't social media but that's just because like i'm a yeah. little social media addicted so i feel like a break would yeah. probably do me some good 
Yeah, but, I'll probably change my mind after all this. But also, um, again, yeah. like, I'm that age, like, where I'm like, I just don't understand TikTok. Like, yeah. I just I just don't oh, get that, like, I'm like, nah. You should download it. You should make it your mission to download <laughs> no, it. No, I've got it. I've got it on my phone. So, like, for my oh, shoot for it. my shoot job, I need it anyway. So, oh, like, okay. But, like, I just don't get it. Like, I need, I need to use it for my work, but I just don't understand. I'm like, I just don't get the hype. <laughs> Oh man, I love it. <laughs> no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. But um, oh, I'll probably, I'll probably, start, I'll, I'll stick for them three. No, I like it. Oh. I like it. It's a good three. It's a good three. I'll get your question for our next guest after after we finish recording. Um, yeah. but that brings us really nicely to to the end. So yeah, Sapphire, thank you again for coming on. I mean, like, congrats for everything you've had going on this year. Best of luck for <laughs> for purpose and for Wrestle Kingdom against me. You like. That's going to be amazing. Can't wait to see you kill it. You're going to absolutely smash it. I can't wait to see Thanks it. Thank you so much. Um, Cheers.